In 2008, I was a successful corporate executive, living on the fast track with no time for my family. My lifestyle ground to a sudden halt after I discovered a lump in my breast, stage three breast cancer. One year after treatment with a body and spirit in need of a new life, I am reinventing myself. Now, I try to break the taboos about living with cancer while trying to prevent it from returning by making wholesome food and spending more time with my husband and five-year-old daughter. This is a journey. Learn with me on Marlene's Meal Makeovers. I remember the day I found the lump. I really still felt invincible. I felt that, you know, hey, not a big deal. I went right in. It was within 24 hours I had it looked at. My doctor at the time said, you know, it just let's go get it checked. Let's double check, but I'm sure it's fine. Went in, you know, then we moved to biopsy. We moved to investigative stages. And then it was when I was sitting on the bed and the, and the doctor came in, the surgeon, if you will, and she walked through the door. She could not draw eye contact. And as soon as the eye contact stopped from all my years in sales, I knew I'd lost. I knew I lost the deal. So I knew at that point it was not good. My daughter was in the waiting room and my husband was there and one of the nurses said, I'd like to take your daughter. We've got some coloring books. Do you mind? And I said, no. And my husband was just like, oh no, she'll be okay. And he's still not understanding what's about to happen. I'm getting myself prepared. She sat down and said to me, it's not good. You have cancer. And I didn't do anything. My husband was crying at the time, but I did nothing. One of the rules I had at first was we're not using the word cancer in the house. We don't bring it in. It's not allowed in the home. It doesn't come in. It's not allowed in the home. And we give it no time because it deserves no time in our home. And that our space is about well-being, getting better, fixing things, fixing ourselves and taking action. And, and that was what we did. I had a no cry rule too, by the way. And so my sister-in-law, for instance, was like, what do you mean, this is not a rule. I said, no, we have a no cry rule and we have a no see rule. And I couldn't even say the word for six months. I couldn't say cancer for six months. It was the C word. Turkey meatloaf. My family loves it. I've switched to ground turkey now. And why have I switched to ground turkey? Well, it's one of the leanest cuts that you can get and feed your family. And this dish is gonna go for miles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start over here. I actually cook my ingredients first before I actually mix my meatloaf and get in there and dig around. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my good friend, um, olive oil here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook these onions a little bit. I gotta have garlic. Okay, so now we have that smell of garlic. We have that smell of onions. Ugh. So now, thyme. Thyme is wonderful. Oh, the smell. Worcester sauce. So what I've got is Worcester, Worcester, whatever. I don't know about you, but my family, what they used to do is just mix it all cold in here. And what I find is when you have dry meatloaf or maybe not so flavorful meatloaf, it's because you need to cook these ingredients. Okay, and if you cook them first and then bring the dish together, it's all at room temperature. Trust me, you're gonna love it. Your family's gonna love you. So, what am I gonna add now? I'm gonna add tomato paste. This is an organic tomato paste that um, that I use. I'm gonna add uh, chicken stock. And basically now, I have got everything I want simmering in this pan. And oh, does it smell good? And see, when you smell this, now you know this is the taste that you should be biting into when you think of meatloaf. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna shut the stove off. And I'm going to shut it off because what I want to do is I don't want to add the um, mixture, the onion mixture, I'm going to call it, to um, our good friend turkey here until it's cooled down. And then we're going to bring it all together. We're going to add breadcrumbs and we're going to beat some eggs and then i got a real secret. So now I'm going to add our lovely onion mixture that's been cooled. So I'm adding all of this in. Now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to just finish beating these three eggs. I just want to beat them a little bit before they go in. And we're going to mix that all in. So there you go. That's everything now that we need for turkey meatloaf. This is a great thing to do with your kids. Kids love honey bucket. What is it like? 
kids in here doing this. So get your hand, get the kids' hands, get them really, really clean, and then let your kids have fun here. Kids cooking in the kitchen, why is that important? I'll tell you, as soon as they get in and they get cooking, they actually start eating it because they enjoy it. Uh, they're part of the process. Okay, so I am fairly pleased with this mixture here now. Okay, so here we go, folks. We're gonna turn this into meatloaf. Okay, so now I have formed my turkey into turkey meatloaf. And on top, I mean, you can put ketchup. I mean, you know, what, what child doesn't love ketchup? But what I use here is my mom makes her own chili sauce. So I've put um, a very secret recipe, but a very good chili sauce that we have uh, homemade that's always in the fridge. So that's going on top. Uh, I'm gonna put the turkey meatloaf in um, the, the oven. I'm the cook once, produce twice queen. So I've got my hands dirty, I have a bowl dirty, I am so lazy, I'm not washing this thing right away. So I've got this meal, we're gonna sit down and eat this now, but while I'm standing here waiting, I am going to convert this uh, other meat, uh, so roughly, you know, just a little over two pounds, I'm gonna make this into meatball. We have our meatballs done, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make soup. We're gonna now add the broth to the soup. We've got the onions, the carrots, we've put a little garlic on top for just a minute and a little bit of thyme. We're gonna bring that to a boil. When that's boiling, we're gonna add the turkey meatballs. We're gonna cook those through and then we're gonna add the gnocchi at the end. That's the last step. I took one bowl of ground turkey and turned it into these three meals. Turkey meatloaf, gnocchi soup with turkey meatballs and I have meatballs for my freezer. You can see these recipes on my website while you're browsing, and you too could cook once and produce twice.